So, we will start with uh, discussing uh, the, the mixing of uh, the entropy change for mixing of two ideal gases. Okay. So, we will discuss mix entropy change for mixing of two ideal gases. Okay. So, suppose initially we have a system having two containers and in one container bromine gas is there in another container nitrogen gas is there. So, this is our initial state. And there is a stop cock between them. If we remove the stop cock, and they will mix right. So, here we have bromine plus nitrogen, here also we have bromine plus nitrogen and this is our final state. We are assuming here that both bromine and nitrogen they behave ideally. And our goal is to calculate the entropy of mixing. Our goal is to calculate to calculate the entropy of mixing of bromine and nitrogen. So, what is entropy change for nitrogen gas molecule? So, N N2 R ln because we know delta s is nothing but n r ln v final y v initial. We already discussed that. Okay. Here v n 2 is the volume of this container and v v at 2 is the volume of this container. Okay. And n n 2 here n n 2 is the number of moles of N 2 gas. So, this is the entropy change for nitrogen gas. What about entropy change for bromine gas? If we say this is delta S p at 2, in similar manner we can write Right. So, what is the total entropy change? That is nothing but entropy change for mixing. So, delta S mix is nothing but delta S N 2 plus delta S B at 2, right. So, we can write this one is like n n 2 r ln v 
n 2 plus v d at 2 by v n 2 plus n v at 2 r l n v n 2 plus v d at 2 by v d at 2 correct. Very simple. Next, we can write like minus n into R ln V n 2 by minus n V at 2 R Right. Now, at constant temperature and pressure, for ideal gas, volume is proportional to number of moles, right. Okay. So, we can write delta S makes Right. <laughs> now, we will just do some manipulation here. where n is nothing but n n 2 plus n b at 2 or total number of moles in the system. So, we can write delta s max where x x n 2 is mole fraction of n 2 right. And this is nothing but your number of moles of n 2 by total number of moles ok. And x b at 2 similarly x b at 2 is the mole fraction of B at 2, and this is nothing but number of moles of B at 2 by total number of moles. Okay. So, we can simplify this expression, or in, in general, we can write in general, we can write delta S mixing is minus n r sum over i x i l n x i right, where x i is the mole fraction of ith species. Okay. And 
in general is 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 a fraction okay so xi value of xi is or value of xi falls in between Zero and one, right? Okay. So basically, x i is a frac is a frac is a fractional quantity. It's fraction, right? So delta is mixing is greater than zero. Okay. So it says that entropy of mixing. Or mixing of entropy of mixing is positive. Let's say entropy of mixing is is positive. Okay, or in other words, okay, the mixing process is entropically favorable. Next, we discuss the entropy change. arising from a phase transition so next we'll discuss what is the entropy change due to phase transition okay now all phase transitions suppose you have solid ice when it melts it gives liquid water and from there we get water vapor right so, from solid to liquid, liquid to vapor, right. So, when phase, phase transition takes place, so this, this phase transitions are accompanied by change of entropy, okay. Because in case of solid ice, okay, so the system is not that much chaotic, but when it melts and, and, and forms liquid water, molecules are more chaotic. When it further boils, gives water vapor, it's further more, more chaotic uh, water molecules are, okay. So, under the condition of condition of constant pressure the latent heat of of a phase transition is nothing but its enthalpy of of transition and we call it delta h trans delta h transition at the temperature of transition if we say that transition temperature is T trans ok the system is in equilibrium right. So, the heat is transferred reversibly from the surroundings, right. Okay. 
So, heat is transferred reversibly from us because this is an equilibrium process. Okay. Okay. So, we can write the entropy of transition if we say delta S transition is nothing but delta H transition by T transition. Right. Now we'll move. Okay, we'll move to something else. Okay. So so far, what we discussed, we discussed that, or we know DS system is greater than zero for spontaneous process right but this is applicable for isolated system only so ds system change in entropy for the system greater than 0 for it says that okay, the process is spontaneous process, but this condition is applicable only for isolated system. Okay. But in general, in general means process can be uh, the system can be isolated or non isolated in general d s total nothing but d s universe equals to d s system plus d s surroundings is to be greater than 0 for spontaneous process. So, in order to judge whether a system is a spontaneous or, or a non spontaneous process, we need to calculate two different quantities, right. One is DS system, another is DS surroundings, we will then sum them up and then we will calculate DS total or DS universe and then we will check whether the value of uh, this quantity is greater than 0 or not. Then we can say that process is spontaneous or not, okay. So, in general, we need to calculate. we need to calculate two quantities, two quantities d s system and d s surroundings to judge or to examine whether the process is a so we need to calculate two different coordinates d s system and d s surroundings okay in order to judge whether the process is a spontaneous or not it would be better if we can identify the spontaneity of a of any process by calculating only one parameter right so it would be better if we can identify the spontaneity of any process by calculating only one parameter, right.
by calculating only one parameter, right? And it would have been further better if the parameter is a state function, right? Okay. So let's see whether we can have one single parameter that can tell us whether the process is spontaneous or not. Okay. So from first law of thermodynamics, we know. We know d e u is del q plus del w right? at constant volume when volume is constant at constant volume means no P V work right. When volume is constant there is no P V work. So, d u is del q right and in this special case when del w is 0 d u we can write d q and q is a state function in this special case when del w is 0. Okay. Now, in, in the in previous class we discussed about Clausius inequality and we know d s is greater than equal to del q by t. Okay. So, it says t d s is greater than equal to del q. So, we can write d u is less than equal to t d s okay. or we can write d u minus t d s less than equal to 0 at constant volume. Okay. So, you can further write d u minus t s less than equal to 0 at constant volume and temperature. Okay. And this u minus T s is known as Helmholtz free energy A. Okay. So, A at constant temperature and volume less than or equal to 0. Okay. So, if you go back and check it, we use classical uh, Clausius inequality right here. So, this is the Clausius inequality we have used here. Okay. So, if you correlate with that and this expression, we can say this negative sign represents spontaneous process. and equal sign represents equilibrium. Huh? And A here we defined as u minus T s. So, A is known as A is known as Helmholtz free energy or sometimes Helmholtz free energy. Okay. So, this is the condition, this equation, if we say equation 1, this is the condition to check a process is spontaneous or not when the process is being carried out at constant temperature and at constant volume. And this A is a state function we can prove it. So, if we like we plotted for entropy, if we if we if we plot a schematic diagram where we are 
plotting in Helmut Prinzi change versus time, we get like this. So, here d a at constant temperature volume is less than 0 and d a t v equals to 0. Here this is equilibrium and this is spontaneous process. And this is known as a minimum. Okay, so, a process when d a at constant temperature and volume is greater than 0 cannot be a spontaneous one unless and until we do some work okay, and make the process spontaneous one. Okay. So, we got a is u minus T s or we can write del A equals to del U minus T del S at constant T. Okay. And V suppose. Okay. Now, if we look at this equation, equation 2 here, when delta u is less than 0 and delta s is positive, when delta u is negative and delta s is positive, this makes delta a constant T v less than 0. So, it, it makes the process a spontaneous one, okay. but if delta u and delta s they have different sign. Okay. Suppose, delta u is less than 0 and delta s is also less than 0, if we if they possess the same sign. Okay. In that case, we need to we need to examine the value of delta u and t delta s. Okay. And then only we can judge whether the process is a spontaneous one or not. Okay. So, when delta u is negative and delta s is uh, also negative, okay. we need to consider both the quantities. When delta is suppose if delta u is positive, if delta u is positive and delta s is also positive, then also we need to examine, we need to examine both delta u and t delta s terms. Okay. Both the terms we need to consider and then only we can judge whether the process is spontaneous or what spontaneous one or not. Okay. Now, if we, if we think about the entropy of mixing, the experiment we carried out for the mixing of bromine and nitrogen gas that we discussed just now. We know delta is mixing is minus n r sum over i x i l n x i right. And this mixing process for this mixing process delta u is 0 right. So, what is delta a there? So, delta a mix nothing but n r t sum over i x i l n x i. And since x i is, is a fraction, same mole fraction is, is a fractional quantity, 
we can say delta A mix is less than 0. Okay. So, we now discuss the concept of Helmholtz free energy. But there is a drawback there because the most of the chemical reactions are being carried out or are carried out at constant temperature and pressure. So, we need to have a parameter or rather a state function by examining that state function at constant temperature and pressure process, if we can say the process is spontaneous one or not. right? So, that is how the Gibbs free energy or Gibbs energy term has been coined. Okay. So, Gibbs, Gibbs free energy, the concept of Gibbs free energy or free energy terms comes. So, so Gibbs free energy sometimes we call Gibbs energy is, is termed as G and why we need to have G, why Helmholtz free energy is not sufficient because most of the or since most of the reactions occur at constant T and P. So, it would be better if we define a state function which helps in determining the spontaneity of a process at constant temperature and pressure. Okay. So, we will we'll define that quantity now. So, we know d e o is del q plus del w. Remember here pressure is constant unlike the for the case of Helmholtz free energy where volume was constant. So, we could able to make del w 0, but here del w is not 0. Okay. So, and now we know again del q by T or d s is greater than equal to del q by T okay. or in other words T d s is greater than or equal to del q. So, we write d e u So, since del w is not 0 here, so del w is nothing but p d v. Okay. So, we can write d So, at constant temperature and pressure, this is x. And we know u plus p v is nothing but enthalpy. Okay. So, we can write d h minus t s less than equal to 0 or we can write d g at constant temperature and pressure less than equal to 0. Okay. So, this is the this is the expression del d g at constant temperature pressure less than equals to 0 is the continuous conditions for spontaneity of a process. So, here g so g here is nothing but h minus t s. Okay. Next we will discuss how g varies with temperature and pressure. So, variation of Gibbs free energy with temperature and pressure. So, so this thing we will discuss now. This is very important expression we will uh, we will arrive two, 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 two very important expression we will arrive. Okay. If we consider the variation of Gibbs free energy uh, at, uh, with, uh, with temperature and pressure. 
Okay, so, we know g is nothing but h minus T s. So, we can write d g as d h minus T d s minus s d t. Now, h is u plus p v. So, d h is nothing but d u plus p d v plus v d p. Right. So, if you substitute the value of d h here, we get d g is d u plus p d v plus v d p minus t d s minus s d t. Next is what is d u plus p d v? So, d u plus p d v this term is nothing but d q and t d s also is nothing but d q. Okay. So, we write d g is nothing but d q plus v d p minus t d s minus s d t. Okay. And this t d s also is nothing but d q or rather del q here, we cannot write d q here, we write del q. So, we write d g is v d p minus s t t. So, this is a very very important expression. Okay. Why we will see now. Okay. So, we get d g equals to v d p minus s d t. From there we can write del g by del p at constant temperature gives volume. Okay. So, if we vary g with pressure at constant temperature, we get volume. So, this is our equation, uh, suppose this is our equation 2 here and del g by del t at constant pressure, we write minus s. So, this is our equation 3. And these two expressions, these two expressions are very very important. We, we need to remember those two th expressions. Okay. Now, if we consider, first we will consider this expression, uh, expression three. Okay. So we will consider expression three here. Okay. So we get this is expression three. Okay. Now, if we plot. G versus temperature in Kelvin, right. Expression 3 says variation of Gibbs free energy with temperature at constant pressure. So, this is at constant pressure. Okay. So, so, in expression 3, if you look at expression 3 here, we get that the slope of the curve is negative, right because absolute entropy is a positive quantity. So, the slope of g versus t plot will be having negative slope. So, the plot of g versus t will be having negative slope. So, we get like this. If you look at the figure carefully, what do you observe? You observe that the slope is different up to this point. Okay. Again from this point to this point, after this point the slope is also different here. Okay. So, this is known as melting temperature. Okay, melting point up we can say. So, this is this is melting point, this point is melting point and this is boiling point. Why the slopes are different here? So, the slopes are different here because S 
gas absolute entropy for gas molecule is much much higher than is liquid which is greater than is solid ok. That is why we get different slopes here. So, this region is our solid region, this is liquid region and this is gas region. Okay. Okay, so, this is at constant pressure, okay. when pressure is constant, we get this kind of plot, if we plot G versus T. Now, few important expressions, you, uh, now we will consider another expression right, that expression 2. So, from expression 2 or equation 2, we can write d g equals to p d p okay, and g 1 to g 2 limits are here and here p 1 to p 2. Okay. So, for ideal gas okay, v is nothing but n r t by p. So, we can write del G is nothing but G 2 minus G 1 is A n R T L n P 2 by P 1. Okay. Or you can further write del G is nothing but A n R T L n V 1 by V 2, since P is inversely proportional to V at constant T and n. Okay. So, we get another good expression, another nice expression for, for calculating delta g here. Okay. So, so far what we got, we, 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 if, we, if we summarize what we have discussed so far, we have d u is t d s or rather we can write in del q if the process is reversible one del q plus del w reversible. Okay. So, we can write d u is del q plus del w and we can write this one as t d s minus p d v. Okay. And from here we can write del u by del s at constant volume is T and del u by del v at constant s is minus p. Okay. So, from here we get the definition of absolute entropy, absolute temperature. Okay. If we vary, if we calculate del u by del s at constant v, we get temperature. Now, we also got d h d h is nothing but d u plus p d v plus v d p right. Okay. So, d u plus p d v is nothing but del q plus v d p and del q is nothing but T d s plus V d p. Okay. So, if we do the way we did it before, we get del h by del s at constant pressure is T and del h by del p at constant s is V. Okay. Then we have a so we have we know a so d a is d u minus t d s minus s d t right 
So, if we further simplify this one, you will get du is minus p dv minus s dt. Okay. Because this du you can further write like p d s minus p d v minus t d s minus s d t. This is your del q and this is your del w. Okay. So, from this expression d a equals to minus p d v minus s d t, we can write del a by del v at constant temperature is minus p and del a by del t at constant v is minus s. And lastly, we know d g is d h minus s d t minus t d s right. And h we know d u plus p d v plus p d p minus s d t minus t d s and the whole term is nothing but del q ok and this is also del q. So, we get d g is v d p minus t d s ok. So, we can write del g by del p at constant temperature gives volume and del g by del s at constant pressure oops not t d s this is s d t oops sorry this is s d t. So, this is not del q the other one is del q here this is del q. Okay, so, we get del g by del t at constant pressure is minus s. Okay. So, we have obtained so far 8 important expressions. Okay. So, from these expressions we can derive Maxwell's relationships. So, thank you very much.